much manga as I would like, something I've always appreciated about them is their cover arts. You have to represent what your series is in a single image while also looking good to get people to pick it up. It's honestly the only reason why the thought of reading more manga still echoes in my head every day. The aspects of a really good cover for one series can be completely different for another and that's why I wanted to talk about them, because there is an artistry to them that a lot of people don't think about. Covers can be broken down into two aspects, the art itself and how it's presented. The art is either really refined and polished looking better than the actual content of the manga or the opposite being sketch based having a slight feeling of imperfection. One isn't better than the other because it all depends on how they are used with the presentation. You either have minimalism where there is little to nothing going on in the background having a single piece of art as the focus, canvas which is where the art takes up the entirety of the cover using all the space for one big piece, and finally border, when the art is limited to a border leaving the rest of the cover empty. These can be combined in many ways, and doing so it has to do a good job in representing the essence of the series as a whole, or if anything the content of that specific volume. That's what makes good covers in my opinion. And obviously some really good art. We're gonna be going through a lot of them. Some old ones, some new ones, and everything in between. So let's begin. Bleach and Naruto are pretty great examples of two different approaches to the same concept. Both using minimalism, Bleach has nice simple character profiles that say a lot about each of them on the cover or if anything makes you want to learn more about them, each one giving you a distinct vibe because of how it keeps it fresh with new poses, angles, and shots to really convey who the character is or what they are feeling in that volume. Really simple, but effective in leaving an impression on you, while Naruto has multiple things as the focus telling you what will be covered in that volume. One of my favorite examples is Volume 18, Tsunade laying in the back while Naruto hones his Rasengan. Two very important story beats that are connected perfectly presented on the cover. They're also pretty clever because since they have a lot going on, you don't realize they're minimal until specific volumes where the art doesn't take up most of the space. It keeps a subtle layer of focus to the art at all times, while also making the covers that use the entire page hit harder. Minimalism going for a less is more thing is very reliant on the art because it has to be good to carry it, and these two nail that. Both also use sketch based art but for different reasons. Bleach was more mature compared to its contemporaries because of its older cast and darker scenes, so the art has a more serious, grittier feel to get that across, while Naruto's art is used more to give off an earthy feel that calls back to the traditional ninja world the story takes place in. But this isn't the only way to use minimalism. Low Blockade Battlefront has amazing covers that focus on the members of Libra, each one showing off Yasuhiro Nighthouse's stellar character designs as well as their unique ability on top of textured and colored backgrounds with a nice faded air spray finish that really nails the urban aesthetic of the series. If you don't know, it takes place in this supernatural version of New York and the covers really look and feel like that. It's the same logic as the others, but the way the background is used gives them way more personality. My favorite being Volume 3, having Chain be the focus, showing her dilution ability, but what I really love is the textured background that looks like the moon, because it's a subtle way to present that she's a werewolf. This little detail really sets it apart from the others for me, but they're all still amazing. But in my opinion, the most perfect minimalist covers are that of Tonari no Seki-kun, the master of killing time. Simple, to the point, and tell you everything you need to know. Who are the main characters? These two. Where do they take place? School. What's it about? Guy goofs off in class, girl's the only one to see it. That's it. That's the entire series exactly. The covers are also really fun, expressive, and have nice polish art of the characters. And I really like how the activity Seki does changes per volume. It's a nice little touch. It now seems like the perfect time to talk about refined art. These are a lot more cleaned up and polished because this is the idealized image the mangaka has of their series. This is how they see it without any limitation and because of that it engrosses you into the world of it. Bokuben's covers are amazingly colored, detailed, and shaded, showing the beauty and cuteness of the girls. All of them do a great job in showing why they're lovable through activities they do in each one that are also the highlight of that specific volume. They're all just really pleasant and inviting like the girls themselves because of the soft colors used. Volume 4 is my favorite because of how it incorporates the colors of Asumi and Mafuyu into the setting by blending them together, overall giving it a cooler tone compared to the others, since these two are the more calm, collected ones of the cast. Food Wars has some of my favorite covers of the last few years, the art using all the space with Shun Saeki's incredible detailed and colored art. Each is just beautiful that you can easily hang them up on your wall, but what I love is that they're all completely different from one another. Having some that are just characters, moments, locations, to even the matchups all conveying a unique vibe because of Saeki's incredible skill with pen and ink. And all of them show each side of the story, a fun lighter side of the characters and their relationships, the more intense serious moments, and obviously who the chefs are. 
Volume 26 is just Kobayashi, and there isn't really anything ominous about it, but the way she's drawn with the dark colors and that she's sitting on these dangerous animals so casually makes it more intense, like she's judging you or doesn't see you as an equal. The same idea is done with others like Megumi and Soma, but hers feels more dangerous. It's so good. As someone who's been loving the show, each one tells me where it is in the narrative, but also throws me off because the covers that follow won't meld with the current one. It keeps me at the mercy of the story, not allowing me to predict where it's going. The covers do so much like the series itself, but that's something for another day. Like how I showed refined minimalist covers with Sekikun, I want to show the inverse, and Black Clover fits that bill. While not all of them are home runs for me, they create this unique effect because of the style and presentation feeling more like ancient art that gets across the fantasy setting it takes place in. So while some are pretty lackluster, when a good one hits, it hits hard. Also being able to use the sketch style to convey darker, more dire moments when it needs to. While I'm at it, I do want to explain why they're not all great for me. A lot of them have these compositions that make them hard to read because of how crowded they are. It's just way too much visual information that you might not even notice some of the things going on in the covers. I only say this because when they do get simpler, they have a stronger presence because you can see the art clearer. A bunch of them do that and they just feel totally different. Volume 23 is just the best one overall, it seriously looks like a hand-drawn painting, it's amazing. Border presentation, while being my least favorite, is still interesting because of how it combines the others. Having most of the page blank with a single piece of art at the center focusing on it even more than normal minimalism. It makes them have bigger impact and also unifies all the volumes aesthetically. These are my least favorite since you can't play around as much compared to the other two because the art is stuck in a frame. But again, the art is usually fantastic so it works. Focusing on them even more carries them. I do appreciate when they mess with the rest of the page instead of leaving it white. Like how Orin High School Host Clubs is the same color as the school uniform of the characters, also making it pop more, or how the Yu-Gi-Oh manga looks like aged paper to give it that ancient historic feel that the story is rooted in. The FMA covers don't really do anything for me. The art itself is great, being done by Hiromu Arakawa, but outside the frame it's pretty plain. The best ones in this area for me are the DBZ covers. Toriyama's art is really good. They all have strong energy that if anything, being in a border emphasizes even more. But what I really love is how he got the most out of the limitation. Just doing whatever he wanted to fill up the space. Single activities, headshots, group shots, and when he needs to, stress the serious moments. Like Volume 7 where Goku takes up most of the frame with Frieza at the center to show that he's the enemy, or my favorite one being Volume 25 because he actually incorporates the frame into the piece showing all the players at that point in the arc with Boo in the center because it all revolves around him, with the characters segmented by color, red being the ones involved in training while green are the ones who actually fight him, Boo having a different color because he's the enemy. This one is just levels of clever which is why I love it. While I've been showing very clear combinations, one of my favorite things is when mangas don't abide by this and experiment with all these aspects over the course of their run. If we go back to sketch-based art, they're typically used to convey dark, grittier tones. Hunter x Hunter uses it in a unique way, to show the fun childlike side of the show that at first it looks like, but it reveals its true self over the course of the narrative and the covers reflect that, some being incredibly haunting by how rough the art is. My favorite thing is the dichotomy of the two styles because of when he picks to use them. The cute ones start being used more for the villains while the scary one gets used for the heroes. One of the cool things about the Berserk covers is that you can see Kentaro Miura figure out what he likes. He goes through all the forms of presentation until he finds the one that clicked with him. Starting with minimalism and slowly filling up the cover until he went all in on canvas in volume 9, and then ending up with portrait border on volume 18, and keeping it for the rest of the run. But even then he still experiments, with the color backgrounds until he switched to plain white and even now switching to refined art. It's really cool to see that. On a different note, some series get lucky enough to get multiple versions, and with that, new cover art, but that can be 50-50 with the final product. DBZ got so much out of using borders that the compilations are so boring in comparison. They're just art of Goku on a red background. While the art itself isn't bad, it lacks the personality the originals had. Bleach and Naruto do the same thing. They're not as interesting as their originals, Bleach just straight up reusing covers just with colored backgrounds, they're pretty lackluster. Sailor Moon has some pretty cool ones because they're the same idea with different takes on it. Both have the Sailor Guardians on the cover with their power surrounding them. 
The standard ones have these fun expressive close-ups, while the Eternal Editions instead are more serious and farther away. They both do a great job in representing Sailor Moon, just two different sides of it. One representing the fun, light-hearted shoujo side, while the other the more serious, whimsical side of it. I got the Eternal Editions as gifts, but I've always wanted the originals because I like how fun and cute they look. Going back to Fullmetal Alchemist, it got two. The first one being just lazy close-ups of the original art from the first manga, while the hardcovers are fantastic, being minimalist portraits of the characters with Arakawa's incredible art. Also having the important symbols from the narrative over the title, both being the color of the character represented, so simple, yet so effective, I love these so much. Sometimes new versions are region-specific. Thatchbell's covers are really nice, showing all sides of the series as it progresses, but the recent complete editions in Japan are amazing. Nice clean shot of human Mamoto with their power and specific spell behind them. The colors, shading, and posing, they make me just want to go through the entire series again. These might be some of my favorite covers, and I hope we get them here one day. I want to bring this up because this will be the only time, but the American release of San Korea are so weird because of how different they are from the original Japanese ones. It's a love story between a human boy and a zombie girl. Like the Sailor Moon ones, both do a good job in representing the series, just two completely different sides of it. One being horror, the other being romance. Both have their own charm, and as someone who is a fan, I can say both are incredibly accurate. It's just I've never seen such a drastic change between regional manga releases. Something happened here, I just don't know what. Also, if you're curious, Volume 3 is my favorite because of the drastically different approach on the same idea, being the hurt arm. I just find it really funny. While I've been talking about solid ones this entire time, I do want to bring up the other end of the spectrum. These covers I would say miss in multiple areas. Kaguya-sama Love is War comes to mind when I think of a pretty weak modern cover. It's not because they look bad, they have this nice detailed character art with nice colored and patterned backgrounds, but it's for how little they tell you about the manga. If anyone's seen or read Kaguya-sama, you know it's this massive Death Note style mind game all based around a cute high school romance. The characters overcomplicate something really simple which makes it super silly. Volume 1, while it does represent the more refined and intimidating outward appearance of Kaguya, there is nothing else to it. And since this was the first one, it's used as a base for all the ones that follow. The characters are so zoomed in that there isn't much room to do more with the background, while also being so close that you can't show much of their personalities. It's just a character close-up and it doesn't really show that it's a goofy romantic comedy. If you remove the title, there is no way of knowing anything about it. Funny enough, a lot of these issues are in the American release. The Japanese ones are the same, but have these little triangles showing the true sillier side of the characters and the story, which is a big contrast to the art, so it makes a bigger impression. Not all the covers have this, so the problem still stands, but at least they all have the heart in the eye as a nice way to show that love is the focus. It just gives it way more personality. It's pretty clear that Viz Media wanted to unify the covers more, which is why they removed the triangles. And since the heart is based around the Japanese text, they had to remove that too. Servernic Service falls to the same problem, but way worse since the art itself isn't really good. While it is accurate to the contents of the manga, it doesn't really present the essence of what it is. It's this office comedy about all the things that happen in the life of their oddball employees that make it far from the norm. It's a lot sillier than it lets on, but the covers don't show that, just being a single flat color with a ton of leftover space and a character with little personality. I'd actually say the home video releases for the anime do a much better job. Aside from the cleaned up anime art, it's still the same basic idea as the covers, but the expressions, colors, and shapes, which is actually a callback to the opening, tells you it's really fun while still keeping the weirder part secret. The promotional art for the anime does a way better job too. But you're probably thinking that it isn't fair to compare. A1 most likely saw the manga art and decided to do their own thing, which is why they look better. But if you look at the official fanbook, it's calling back to it with the background. It just has better posing and expression with the characters, giving it way more energy than the manga ones. This one is really the same basic idea, but with a completely different result. One of my favorite things is when covers do something really subtle that add an extra layer of charm or personality to it. Hopping back to Food Wars briefly, Volume 1 and 2 are from the same perspective but are used to show the different upbringing and ideology of the characters. One where Soma happily serves you the food in this cozy diner, the second where Erina unpleasantly awaits the food you are serving her in this cold luxurious setting. But this is a small example. Komi-san's covers are these beautiful pieces of art that take full advantage of the page, each cover highlighting a specific moment from that volume while keeping Komi the main focus with her friends on the side. They're overall fantastic, but does anyone else notice something interesting about them? If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Komi herself. 
If anyone's read the manga, you know that she's this incredibly silly girl with this really expressive face. It's a hilarious comedy series, but this site isn't represented in the covers. Why is that? It's because when you're looking at them, you're someone that doesn't know her, so you're seeing the perfect refined idea of her. When you start reading it, you're going from someone external to someone actively involved with Komi. That's when you see the real her. It's the exact same thing the characters in the world go through, but now represented in the covers and your actual interaction with the manga. It's pretty genius. All the covers are from your perspective, an external one. From being at the same ramen shop, to the same booth at the festival, to riding bikes with her. This little detail really makes me love the art even more because it says that I'm just as involved in the story as the rest of her friends. There is one other series that I think does subtlety really well, and that's Fire Force. While their covers are pretty similar to Ataji Okubo's previous work, Soul Eater, being these nice minimalist team shops or singular character profiles all with his fantastic art, Fire Force does a few things slightly different, the first being the art. The covers of Soul Eater are really good, they're iconic, but if you look at them they never really tell you anything about the characters, and it's because the world and concept of Soul Eater is so visually unique that presenting any aspect of them looks really cool and make them eye-catching. Fire Force has a much more grounded world and setup being based around supernatural fires and firefighters, so the art is focusing more on the inhabitants of the world rather than the world itself. The setting being more normal allows for the art to have brighter colors and more shading, overall giving them a very clean finish. Aside from that, they're great because they tell you a lot about each member of the cast only with their expressions, posing, and outfits. Shinra comes off as this cocky loose cannon because of his smile and how his feet are exposed with flames coming out of them. Arthur gives off a completely different vibe, having his sword, bird, and hood nodding to the whole night thing he has going on and overall giving him a more regal look. The art is fantastic because they all say so much while also saying so little. So what's the other thing they do different? The background. The covers are still great minimalism, but the red lines really are the game changer. They create this next level of pop that makes them stand out immediately and give them a lot of energy. Seriously, just removing them changes how they feel even for the calmer covers. But it's how they are used in conjunction with the character art that make them something special. In the world of the manga, the good guys have these black, blue, and gray uniforms, but as the story progresses, we meet the antagonist of the series being the Evangelist, who don a white and red uniform that contrasts theirs. The covers really change with this detail because depending on how much the character shown blends with the background, it's an easy way to tell the reader if they are a good guy or bad guy. If you look at every single member of Company 8, they don't blend in at all, but if you look at the Evangelist, it's the opposite. But these are two ends of the spectrum. There are some characters that don't fully go with either, making them more ambiguous, which is actually something covered in the story itself. For example, if you look at Hibana and Joker's volumes, one contrasted a little bit with the uniform but still has more lighter colors which alludes that she isn't exactly a good guy, while the other has the same colors as the background but at different shades and with a splash of black to show that he's a bad guy but not on their side. But out of all the covers, my favorite one that I think uses everything to its advantage is Volume 10 with Victor Lich. It uses both color schemes really prominently, but with him putting on the uniform makes it look like he's trying to disguise himself from the red and white. Which, if anyone's seen or read the story, is exactly what he does. It's telling us an important story beat just with two red lines on top of that he's a scientist with the lab coat and that he's a little off with his facial expression. The red lines take what is fantastic art and add more meaning to them. The covers are so good that David Production actually homages them in the anime with the title card for every episode and all over the second opening. I seriously got the idea for this whole video because of Fire Force. The covers are some of my favorite from the last few years because of how much it does with an idea we've seen done thousands of times. Covers are really underappreciated for something we see all the time, and especially because they're the best they've ever been. Unlike other mediums, like video games and movies, they've actually kept their quality from the early years and if anything gotten more experimental over the last decade. The art for movies and games are usually made by people far removed from the production trying to appeal to a wide audience, so a lot of what makes them special is lost, and it's the reason why a lot of them look the same. Manga is the reverse, it's made by the source, the people who make it, so a lot more passion and thought is put into them because they're just making what they think represents their series the best, and it's why covers are so diverse. It's actually really hard to find what is considered a quote unquote bad one. There are just really weak ones, but even then you can still see they aren't lazy. When I buy manga, I still spend time just looking at the covers because they're so cool. Even when I find some that I don't really love, I can still appreciate them. 
and I hope I've made you look at covers in a different way, and maybe help you understand why some are your favorites. I hope to see you in the next video, but next time a manga catches your eye, just take a moment to appreciate its cover.